What I'm going to talk about is 321. Has anyone ever heard of that? Three, two, one. It comes from jig theory. If you're thinking about a, a part and you're going to machine it, and you, gotta, you want to make a plane to start from. So you take this piece of casting. Let's say we've got a casting. It's rough as guts. I want to face off something flat. So I run it through a, a mill to flatten one surface. Once I've got one surface flat, I want it to sit on three points, and I drop it down onto my jig. And then I slide it over, and I face another face, and then I slide that over to two points until it stops. So it's sitting on three, so I've got a plane. It's sitting on two, so I've got a line that can move up and down. And then I put one point here to stop it from moving. And if I can leave it in that state when I machine it, it will let its own stresses relieve as I machine. And when I'm done, the surfaces will all be flat. Does that make sense? That is not the way it's done in the real world. And when I say the real world, this is the way we did it at Boeing. This is what I learned to do in a very high level in Boeing. What people do here is they clamp the shit out of it, they machine it, they pull it off and it bends, oh, they put it back down and they machine it again. Do you know what I mean? It does not allow the material to take its own natural shape. So 321 is a, is a way to allow something to take its own natural shape. And what I do at Motivated, and I hammer my engineers, the first thing I want them to do before they do an FE is uh, I want to know what do you think the deflected shape looks like? So if I, uh, if I have a beam, and I say, OK, here's my simply supported beam, and I run my FE, what's, is that going to be a simply supported beam? This is what the deflected shape is going to look like, right? Is that a happy beam? That's not a simple support, is it? But I can do that so easy in FE and get a quarter of the stresses and a half of the deflection that I would get in a real FE if I did the boundary condition right. I can be four times wrong by one simple bad assumption. And that's the simplest problem you'll ever have to run in FE. So what I should have done was this. And in linear static analysis, this doesn't even make sense. It, it, I can't do that. I do this. I can do that, sorry. No, no I, I can do that, sorry. I'll take that back. That's what I want to do. Does that make sense? I've got a roller over here. I've got a pivot over here. That'll give me a happy beam. That'll get the smile that I'm hoping to see. And if, if I didn't know that, if I didn't know what my deflected shape was before I ran my FE, I would look at it and say, huh, wow, that's a lot less stress than I expected. My hand calc said, oh, this is great. I'm going to go tell the client they can build it. Well, my hand calc was a lot more accurate than my FE. So what you want to do in 321, so what I want to do here, and if that was a, trying to think of how I can explain 321, what you want to do is to restrain three points on a plane in translation normal to that plane. So, so I kind of I can't really draw it very good here, but I'll just put a triangle on the board and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is going to be hard for me because I'm very challenged when I go to... So I want three points vertically, right? Everybody's got that? So that's, that's got me going that way. I want two points in a, another direction, and I want one point that way. And when I say points, those have to be vertices. And in some of the softwares that you can run, like SolidWorks Simulation Express, they don't allow you to choose a, a vertice. They force you to use a face. So all of a sudden, you can't do 3, 2, 1. You can't do a lot of actual real-world boundary conditions when you're forced to restrain a face in any direction. <coughs> Does, do you understand what 3, 2, 1 kind of is in that context? How much more time do I have? 10 minutes, cool. So if I do that to my FE, FE structure, I'll get the most simple deformation the most unrestrained deformation that's possible to that. And usually an unrestrained deformation is the highest stress. Do you notice the usually? You've got to be a little bit careful that you're not actually getting more stress by what you're doing, but this should give you the highest stress, which then should give you the worst case. <laughs>